talk in Northeast LA for years about how, in Highland Park in particular, about how it's coming back. We're gonna, in the 80s when that big department store left, they spent, the city spent a couple hundred thousand dollars on um, a revitalization effort. They got storefronts renewed, but they never really treated the, 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 you know, the real heart of the issue, which is that Figueroa is a big thoroughfare for cars moving at speeds that are too fast for the, the, the urban form. This neighborhood right now serves regional interests. It allows people that live in Arcadia, that are tired of the 110, to drive through our neighborhood without wasting as much, you know, so much time as being stuck in traffic on the 110. And um, here at the Flying Pigeon LA Bike Shop, and I think most people in Northeast LA will realize, we value this street more than as a sewer pipe for cars or people living in Arcadia and San Marino. We value this as a place where we actually live and work every day. We breathe the air. Um, we have to deal with uh, people going 45 miles per hour, 50 miles per hour on a street that really they should be really only going 20 on. Figueroa, like Adams in South LA, like Broadway and Lincoln Heights and Chinatown, so many other thoroughfares, Van Nuys Boulevard in the Valley, places that used to be uh, middle class, nice shopping districts have been completely blasted out and turned into like these zones where what do you have? You can just list it. Everybody knows in LA, if you live here long enough, you got discount stores, nail salon, fast food, auto repair, discount store, liquor store, nail salon, you know, auto repair. And in the poor neighborhoods, they don't even have the auto repair or the discount stores. It's just nail salons and liquor stores. Um, and the reason for that is that these streets, North Figueroa, where we, where we have our business in particular, was oriented in a time when there were a lot of streetcars, and it was designed for kind of a non-car driving public, to take streetcars and walk and maybe ride a horse, <laughs> which I wouldn't advocate because they're messy, uh, but to do that kind of low intensity travel within your own neighborhood. You can see this highlighted in the difference between Figueroa and nearby York Boulevard, which uh, used to have two lanes of pretty fast moving traffic, and um, local merchants uh, who were opposed to a further widening uh, got the lanes knocked down to one lane in each direction. And now a bike lane's been installed. So driving down York uh, takes you maybe a minute or two longer than it used to maybe 20 years ago. The flip side of that is that on that street where the street has been, wide, has been narrowed and only where the street has been narrowed, um, new merchants that have come online doing something other than nail salons and discount stores have been able to thrive. I mean, we've got like great yuppie gastro pubs, we've got a wonderful little coffee shop, and as soon as you get to the portion of the street where it widens again to two lanes, boom, it's done. The gentrification, whatever you want to call it, is over. And so it's almost like a very clear contrast between totally giving the right-of-way over to the automobile versus giving some of it back to the residents and the businesses, and in this case, there's a bike lane too. Um, when, you, when you give it totally automobile, you only get automobile uses. You get burned out uh, small retail shops because they don't have enough parking to support all the car-based retail. Um, you know, we're not Riverside, we don't have large lots. And in the smaller areas where the bike infrastructure is there, you've got these small pedestrian oriented shops that have gone online. I mean, you've got some great retail in York now that didn't exist before and people are making a living. Um, it's not that we can't afford to support that retail, it's that people can hop in their car and drive out of here and they feel like it's worth their time because there's just not enough going on on the boulevard. I grew up on the west side of LA and I didn't understand where I moved when I moved here. Over the years, I really have come to love this area so much, I can't imagine moving back to the beach. It just doesn't seem possible anymore. Um, and so, like most people that move into a neighborhood and they really feel like it becomes a part of them, uh, I wanna see it continue on its track of not progress, but just of a general improvement in the quality of life. I don't wanna have to look at trash every day on the street. I don't wanna have to wake up in the morning and have to smell diesel exhaust every single day. Um, I would like for the character of the sidewalks to be friendly and inviting. I wouldn't, I'd like to carry on a conversation with my neighbors next door at the new uh, Elvis hair salon without having to shout over the roar of traffic on a relatively calm day when you've got buses and, uh, not buses, but trucks going by, going 45 and 50. Um, I kind of just want like that sort of life that most people all over the world want when they move to cities. You know, you've got people all around and we don't get to leverage that in LA. The whole point of moving to a city is there's all this concentrated wealth and knowledge and, um, and humanity, and it's enjoyable to be in that milieu, to be in that, that, that mix. And so I want to leverage that. I want that to happen here where I live. I don't want to have to travel to Holland to experience it on vacation and go like, yeah, I love Europe. I think LA can do that. We just need to kind of relearn how to be a real city again.